the Red Rocker, Sammy Hagar here. Welcome to Rock and Roll Road Trip. Today we are in downtown Los Angeles. As you can see, we're going to check out the Grammy Museum with Kevin Cronin, my buddy from REO Speedwagon. Then we're going to go over to the Clive Davis Theater with Nancy Wilson of Heart and Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains. And we're going to have a blast. Woo, let's go. Come on. Here we are in LA Live, the site of the Grammy Museum with my good buddy Kevin Cronin. And Kevin, you came out here from where? From like Midwest or something? Illinois, baby. We came out here for the studio scene, the record plant on Third well, Street. What scene you know? was happening then? I mean, LA's had punks. We've had, uh, you know, surf music, you know, glam rock, uh, the metal scene. A lot of the metal scene came out of here. LA brought everybody, man. Yeah. Because you know, the studios were here. I mean, we kind of followed the Eagles out here. They were. They That's were the recording. other thing. Yeah. That LA scene. It was the mellow rock. You know, folk the rock. yeah, the, the folk jangly, rock. the birds, yeah. the Buffalo Springfield. That was my that that was my love right there. You know. LA's been it's all here. You guys, REO, you guys were never into, never punks, right? You never did that. Oh well, yeah, yeah, I took the nose ring out of, of just around the yeah, house. Yeah, probably. I don't show the tents. Yeah, just around the house. <laughs> <laughs> let's go inside and get a glimpse of rock and roll history. Come on, Kevin, what do you say? Right, let's do this, bud. Whoa, there's Taylor Swift. Kevin. Dude, red, you got to talk to listen, him, man. you got to get your... Listen, Taylor, listen, that red thing, I'm the red rocker. You stole that from me, didn't you? I am Kate Stubner. I am the senior manager of education at the Grammy Museum. We teach about the history of music, and we try to make it as interactive as possible. And everything is touchscreen. Everything is interactive. I think the best way to experience the Grammy Museum is to come in with an open mind and not uh, going straight to the music that you already love, but really exploring different genres of music that you might not have ever heard of before. So Taylor, so how many Grammys do you have in here? Um, a lot, actually. If you, the entire second floor is dedicated to me and my friends. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're not Taylor. There she is. You, oh Call my me. God, yes. you can't fool Sorry. me anymore. It was good okay, I caught her. I caught her. So we are on the third floor of the museum right now, and this is our Grammy Awards timeline. So it goes from the first telecast in 1959 all the way up until last year in 2015. Well, I love reliving some of this stuff. I mean, let me, you know, it goes, look at this. It goes from Sinatra in 66 to, to Sgt. Peppers in 67. Wow. There's, there's like a paradigm shift in the universe yeah. right there. <laughs> you How know. about it? Kevin, thanks for coming by. Hey, man. My fellow Libran buddy, always a pleasure hanging with you. Good and to uh, see you, you gotta, I want to do a show with you and REO. Let's I do love that. Old Hometown, the original town where REO came out of. Which That'd is be awesome. Like, Champaign, Illinois, man. We're going to Champaign, Illinois next. Let's do it. Someday. <laughs> Maybe not next. Eventually. <laughs> Coming up, we're going to sit down with legendary rockers Nancy Wilson of Heart and Jerry Cantrell from Alice in Chains. Welcome back to Rock and Roll Road Trip. We are sitting down with two veterans of the Seattle music scene. Legendary rockers Nancy Wilson from Heart and Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains. This is going to be an intimate chat in the Clive Davis Theater. The first early rock bands out of Seattle, Heart was really one of the first bands that really made it internationally, kind of put Seattle on the map as hey, a rock and roll town. Uh, what was happening up there before that with you? Like, who were, were you guys listening to? We were listening to, you know, um, the hit, the top 50 radio stations at the time. Uh -huh. And when the Beatles came to play in Seattle in 66, it was just like the biggest countdown in the universe. And it was all um, the community spirit of a not a very big town, like a music town. Seattle comes by rock music very honestly. It's... It's just a port town. It's like the Liverpool of the Northwest. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Yeah. It was just a funny thing that when you guys, Hart, you know, to me, that was kind of like my era where I was trying to make it. So I was watching you guys really close. And, <laughs> you know, you know, I mean, like listening on the radio. Oh, they got another hit. Oh, that sounds good. I should, you know, have that drum sound, all that kind of stuff. But, uh, Jerry, when, they, when Hart was really hitting big up there, what were you doing during that time? Well, I was probably just... Uh, <clears throat> just trying to figure out that this is something that I wanted to do and there's always been a big community uh, for all sorts of art and creative people in the Northwest you know but particularly 
and yeah. rock and roll, which is what we what 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 I aspired to aspired to be. I wanted to be in a band, and we had some local local folks that that did it well, man. And Were you listening to Heart and saying, "Oh man, we got to be like them to make it," or did you guys? What what kind of music were you playing? Everybody starts out emulating their heroes. I, Everybody I know, does, that's, and that's so really true. you know, yeah, so there's absolutely. there's definitely some heart tunes I learned learn for sure. And as soon as Nirvana and Alice in Chains emerged from Seattle, the whole '80s thing was completely kaput in like in no time at, at all. The thing that happened in Seattle, the history of it, you know, there's different waves. One wave in, it crashes when another one starts to swell up, and so we were a part of that. And to see that, see yeah. that happen in our, in our town, with so many other musicians that were great, great bands, man, it, and yeah. have that all happen at the same it, time. It happened really right there rare, too. Really rare. Yeah. It happened you know? right there. Right really, there. really, so, really rare. There were times where I was kind of nervous around you guys. I thought, man, these guys probably yeah. think. You they know, were. They were at a party at Ann's house right after the <laughs> 80s. And was the first one of the first parties we kind of all hung out at. Yeah, yeah. And I was so nervous, too. Yeah, that, it's uncomfortable. That it would be like, oh, the old has-beens, you know, the old dinosaurs. <laughs> I'm telling you. They're, they're, with their stupid big hair and their stupid videos. And um, these guys are legit, you know, like they broke the mold and they changed music. And it was so cool to be in a room with you guys. And you were so non-judgmental and so well, very cool and it's like hey you know can you show me how to play the beginning of that one song Mr. All Wind <laughs> like you asked me sure how to yeah. play that one song yeah. and I was yeah. like yeah. 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 you know well that's your answer right there yeah uh, we always respected you guys and, yeah. and I respect you as well and really what it comes down to is is trying to trying to make good music and write good songs and and you guys have both written plenty of those so and you know the thing that brought me to wanting to interview the two of you is really about you know the two scenes that came out of the same place and and it wasn't like there was a a big gap between them where nothing was happening. Heart was still hot as fire when you guys you know came yeah, into the overlapped. thing. So we overlapped. So, so yeah. it's more it's interesting to me. But now that you know everything's grown up, it's like hearing music and and like you said, the music is what we all now relate to each other about. Is even though we've yeah. become friends and everything else. But I'm yeah. a big fan of of both you guys as songwriters as singers as entertainers and just... Right back at you, man. Hey, stick around for an intimate acoustic jam with Nancy and Jerry. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Sammy Hagar's Rock and Roll Road Trip. Right now, we're going to have an unrehearsed jam session with Nancy Wilson and Jerry Cantrell. It's just like any other road trip. You never know what's going to happen. So let's check it out. What's this song about, Jerry, real quick? Uh... <laughs> Well, it's in the title. I wrote it about my brother. Um, my parents split, you know, I don't know. We were pretty young. I'm the oldest of three. And uh, you know, there was kind of a time where me and my brother weren't getting along too well. And my mom was having a hard time raising the three of us, too. We were living with my uh, grandmother. So my brother moved in with my dad in Oklahoma, and I didn't see him for a, quite a long time. So. Oof. We were kind of separated, you know, so. I'm way too sensitive. Yeah. yeah. I am that. <laughs> so this song was kind of, kind of about, about him, you know, thinking about, thinking about that time of us being apart. And well, maybe I'll being lay back out together. now. You know? Maybe I'll lay yeah. out. See if I can't yeah. do it justice.